have another go. Push. One, two, three. Push, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> From the beginning. Hit it, boys. Boobs are aero, right? Don't no, you can leave that in because that's a fact. <laughs> Rebecca, the people swimming. I know. And this is, apparently, this is the only pursuit you're allowed to engage in on this beach. It's swimming only. Swimming only. So no stand in the filming. We've got to get in. Positively, no cycling. No, you have to. Pay I mean, me. it would be quite. You have to pay me the big bucks. I mean, 40, 50 quid to jump in there this summer. This summer day. <laughs> What's that word when you like the sound of something? When it's a sound that it, it triggers something in your head in a good way. I mean, the sound of these. It's the, nice, isn't it? Yeah, there's a Nostalgic. sound. There's a, there's a word, isn't there? I, I don't know what that word is, but I, I yeah, agree with you. It's nostalgic, because it reminds me of running down the beach as a kid. You know, they've got sandy beaches. Right, <laughs> I mean, the south coast is characterised by pebbly beaches, though, isn't it? Rather than sandy yeah, beaches. Yeah, it's characterised by the pain of putting your bare feet on this. That's trying I'm, to get down to the sea. <laughs> that's why I noticed most of these swimmers were wearing slightly faded Crocs. Yeah. Uh, just to... <laughs> <laughs> Have you been in the sea in the summer? I've, I've, been, I've been in the sea before, um, but at this time of year without a wetsuit, absolutely not. Oh, God. I feel like that's where this could go, though. You could get in. We'd have to, we'd have to considerably up the budget, I think, if I was going to go, <laughs> go in. That's all right. Do you know what I'm feeling? I've seen the sunrise. Some sort of sustenance before Breakfast. we go off on our ride, yeah. yeah. I'm actually getting really quite hungry now. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Did you get those shoes specially made? Yeah, they're actually really high tech. They just work really well on uh, road pedals. Mm. I'm amazed by them. <laughs> I don't know why, but I feel like that when I'm talking to you. That looks fast. I think you might be the far... Do you think I'm No, I, no I, this is not a word of a lie. Boobs are aero. Right? Don't no. You can leave that in because that's a fact, and I've seen that written down. So boobs are error because they did uh, wind tunnel Sorry, tests with women with boobs. Sorry, is there a producer I can speak to about this? No. But also, there are, so let's we could do a super low speed test to see if your bumps arrow. But I reckon that <laughs> you look slippery. You look slippery. <laughs> First off, because uh, I'm wh where are we going? Where are you going to take me? We are going on a gravel ride up the South Downs. Link, not South Downs Way, the Downs okay. Link. Right. So it's a nice tame gravel path and I need tame riding. I would just want to mention I'm pregnant because yeah. this isn't just down to the McDonald's. Not just pregnant, but relatively, yeah, although it was quite hefty McDonald's, wasn't it? I mean, not being funny, <laughs> I'm really having to try hard to suck my stomach in here. It's, uh, it's, just, it's just pointless for I'm me I'm really now. tensing so massively. But, um, <laughs> I can't even, there's, no, I can't and, tense that. So for the people at home, or even if they're not at home, say they're in a car somewhere, it doesn't matter where they are, how far gone are you I'm right now? I'm in month seven, third trimester, so I'm very pregnant. <laughs> Second question. Oh, you're wearing them outside. I don't know whether, I don't know what. What should we do? No, okay. I feel like I am a big advocate for socks on the outside of tights. Okay. However, you've you've gone for an under, but quite a high leg warmer. So actually, you've got quite a bit of white sock exposure there. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to. I think we're going to cover both bases. So so the Are comments sure? won't fall too much. We're, we're, I can you know. change. No, Lee, I think I think you're rocking. Now that kit does look really nice. <laughs> Start the rise. We've done this. This is the start of the Downs Link. Yep. We're not going 37 and a half miles to the North Downs Way. Yeah. Not in my condition. Okay. Well, did it used to be a railway back in the it day? It did, yes. Yeah, That's you can good almost. Knowledge. I think there's a nod almost to the railway by the. If you just pan across to the sign itself, Downs Link, or just use a cutaway, drop it in. Um, <laughs> it's almost like a railway, like a, like a, like a station sign, isn't it? <laughs> right. We're moving from tarmac 
Yeah. To gravel, this is when things get real. Come on, come on. <laughs> we're both in, we're both in. I've never been on a bike ride with a puffer jacket on, but do you know what? It sort of works, doesn't it? Or, oh, you, you look, you look pained. Does it I work? Hope, I hope not, because I was just smiling good morning. Okay, someone. I'm right. Is that, is that how I come across to yeah, uh, passers like you, by? You look like you're wincing at my um, my no. suggestion. Just going back off what you were talking about earlier on about what it feels like to ride when heavily pregnant. Um, the fact that you can ride and that you've, you choose exclusively now when you do ride, understandably so, to ride off road or on trails, you, you feel a lot more safer because I know as friends we talked a lot about it recently that riding on the road now, you just feel super, super cautious, don't you? So you, I can understand why you want to keep out the traffic. I think it's a really good talking point because it's so individual yeah. and I would never ever, as you know, sit and tell somebody else what makes them feel safe or unsafe. Totally. And that's always been really important to me. Um, I've ridden my whole life. Yeah, I started on a race bike when I was seven. So I'm you know, fairly competent on the road and, yeah. and confident. But when I became pregnant, I just wanted to control what I could control. Yeah. And I made the decision that I really love gravel biking and I was really getting into it anyway. Yeah. So it just seemed like the perfect solution because I'm so comfy on this. Got a bit of suspension. Yep. <laughs> and yeah, it's just, it keeps me in a comfort zone where I feel like I'm not constantly thinking, I've got a baby in my tummy, is there heavy traffic coming up? Yeah, it just removes that element for me. Sure. Oh, technical corner. <laughs> corner. This is a great route. So I had to jump straight back into the ride itself. How often do you ride along here? Um, all the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah. It is cracking, isn't it? And we're, it's beautiful. I mean, I don't know this neck of the woods particularly well, Rebecca. What, what river is that? It's the... Ri it's the oh, that's a, not a quiz question. That was actually... I hope you know the answer. No, you it's are, the River Ada. The River Ada. All oh, right. And... ADA? Uh, no. Oh. A-D-U-R. Ada. And so people, right. I think I've heard you refer to it before as the adieu. Oh, right. <laughs> I do it. I was like, yeah, it's like French. Uh, goodbye. I bid yeah, you farewell. Uh, so the River Ada, right? Ada. Did... Okay. Yeah. Ada, and that, and that Ada runs County and that Council. runs straight into the channel, doesn't it? Uh, yes. There we go. <laughs> it's such a gentle way of riding. I mean, you're getting fresh air. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. For that, that, years, the... I didn't ride like this, and I rediscovered it when I got a gravel bike. Honestly. It is brilliant, isn't it? I mean, I, we both love riding on the road. We both like. I mean, you've raced, you know what it's like to train hard, to make the sacrifices, um, and you still enjoy that, but the, en the enjoyment now, and it, people might think, Matt, you've harped on about this on your podcast and other cafe rides, but I I'll say it again, this is, is my favourite sort of riding, just enjoying it, having been able to have a conversation with somebody, absorbing the surroundings, the countryside that you're riding in, and really getting a sense, a sense of movement, but also... You just soak it all up, can't you? It's, br it's brilliant. Oh, so much more. Thank you. Yeah. Is it doomed to fall into the dark? Hunger down and live a life but not know what it So, you know what this castle was called, don't you? On the call cool sheet, it was Bamba Castle. This is Bamba Castle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I suggested it, yeah. Do you know much about it? I used to, but I've forgotten, baby brain. Well, it, it um, used to be owned by uh, William de, de Brauos, who is a French, uh, who's a Norman knight. The, the, the Baron, the rebellion of the Barons against King John, and ultimately that led in, in turn to the formation of the Magna Carta. Did you just go and read it on yeah. that sign up there? Yeah. But I retained it and that's quite impressive. Did, yeah. When did you first start going out on your bike? Day trips. Just for the hell of it, yeah. Just to, mm. to go out and spin. Not, not about training, just literally just riding and going, going places. Yeah, I mean, I started racing like so young. Right. And, and that's just such an overarching memory. But being up here and, you know, trying to get up that climb on a really 
crappy old mountain bike. You know, those memories stand out as well. A lot of playing around on bikes, just yeah. as long as I can remember. I've always ridden in so many different guises. Because I used to go out riding and set up tents. Did you? And have a little pack well, lunch. Yeah, did you just pack come lunch? on any mountain bikes? Definitely. Oh. Um, but I didn't, I didn't camp here. No. I wasn't into adventure cycling way back then. I just we, went home for tea. Did you ever bring, so we used to go camping uh, with our bikes, but one of my mates used to bring a car battery with him um, and a tiny little black and white TV. We, we used to rig up and if we were lucky, we used to get one channel and watch telly and have fires. I mean, I can, camp. I was aware of camping, but not, I didn't mix it with cycling. It's very popular now. It is very popular. Uh, you were packing. way ahead of the curve. We've done, done some bike, bike pack. I, I'm almost, I'm, I'm slowly morphing into a bike packing type cyclist. <laughs> Have another go. Push one, two, three. Push, Rebecca. So this road runs pretty much parallel with another test. I've asked you what the river was called. I've already forgotten. What's it called? The Uda. The Ada. <laughs> the Uda. Or, or <laughs> the, uh, So the Ada. And, and what, what is the name of the road that's running just to the right-hand side? Is it the A... A20, is it the A27? A27. I want to say it's the A27. Stunning bypass. Okay. Stunning road. Right, okay. I really should have done some prep, shouldn't I, on the local road yeah, names? Yeah, but I, I probably didn't think that you'd expect me to ask you such dull questions either. So that's my fault. Um, <laughs> that's on you. Right. A27, let's just go with that. Whoa, look at that cornering. There's some gnarly gravel here as well, some proper gnarl. <laughs> Let these guys go. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank Morning. Thank you. Little sausage dogs. <laughs> Those little dogs are they amazing. They were really, really low slung dogs. Then I think dogs like that on surfaces like this need like little leg extensions, like little like little dog shoes. You know like your shoes earlier on that you wore this morning? Yeah, they were they quite. They need little dog versions of those. <laughs> I'm okay at pronunciation. Uh, pronun <laughs> <laughs> Pronunciation. Okay, I'm not great mm. at foreign names. I'm not French, Italian, a little bit. But when it comes to uh, former Soviet blocks and Eastern European names, it's quite challenging, isn't it? And do you remember on the sixth day when the riders yeah. come up and mm. you introduce them one, one by one? And we've got a clipboard, low light, can't really see the names properly. And I remember when there's one particular, I can't remember who it was that came up. I think they might have been from the Czech Republic or Poland. They came up on stage and it was your turn to say the names. You looked at me. Because sometimes, oh no, we didn't have a clipboard, and, you, mm. and sometimes there's a lag between them coming up and their name appearing on the screen, you yes. know who they are. Yes. And then all you said was, and welcome on stage, and I looked at you and thought, what did you just say? On a slightly more serious note than that, Rebecca, what's, what's the, your perception been like, or what do you feel, how, how you, have you been received, um, and what have the comments been like, with you continuing to ride, continuing to work, continuing to be very active and quite vocal um, about riding when you're being pregnant. How, how's that been for you? Have you, have you been surprised, upset, or um, I don't know, what's it been like for you? So far, I've just been so, I guess, happy and proud of the response right. that I'm getting in putting myself out there, quite visibly pregnant and still riding yeah. Yeah. and still working. Um, it's been overwhelmingly positive, actually, but I was nervous in a way to put myself out there um, but I felt it was so important so so important to be visible and to not hide it and I think I didn't show for quite a long time and now I'm in the latter stage I of the pregnancy that, well, yeah, yeah because so, I kept yeah. saying to you didn't I oh do you think like people are gonna start noticing and I hadn't told people and you were like no you just can't see any bump yet 
and it's all well and good kind of saying you're going to put yourself out there or how you're going to feel when you're not showing but once you start getting this big bump in the way um, it is obviously way more obvious way more visible and then I think you know people need to make an individual decision about how they feel about telling yeah. the world about these things and for me at first I was presenting hidden behind a table maybe like this and you couldn't see that I was pregnant and then in more recent weeks I've really gone for it and I've, I've done a pregnancy series that I've yeah. launched and I've been very vocal about not hiding my bump very deliberately and it has been very so far positive and that has honestly yeah. made me so happy because I think it's changed so much and one of the reasons I didn't want to continue to hide it or apologize for it in any way is because I've been in the bike industry as you know for a very long time yeah. now and when I started out, and actually to this day now, I'll always get comments on things like YouTube saying, sorry, can you just let me know what this presenter's credentials are for talking about cycling? Does she even ride? I get that all the time, does she even ride? And this is pre-pregnancy, yeah. because people look at me and say, right, well, she's not a six foot bloke with 4% body fat. Why is she talking about cycling? And you know, I'm putting that so specifically because that unfortunately is still an image that people have. Like that's the expert I want telling me about my bike tech. So I've received so much negativity over the years for being a woman talking about bikes and yeah, constantly asked, why are you here? Why are you talking about this? Yeah. Prove yourself, prove yourself, prove yourself. Yeah. And when I became pregnant, I thought, well, here we go. If they're already commenting that my body image or the way I look doesn't dictate bike rider, what are they going to think when I've got a huge bump so you're totally in the way? It, totally and I just it, think I have to because I don't want other people to feel like they can't work in this industry, that they can't embrace life changes because I am pregnant and I am still able to talk with the knowledge about cycling that I could six months ago, or, you know, six, seven months ago. Why, why does that change? And, and just to go back a little bit, it's interesting. Um, and it is sad because we, we've both worked in, in the cycling media for a long time now. Uh, and I've worked alongside different women before. But generally speaking, whoever I work with, whatever body shape the women, the women that I work with, they get, there are some people who will still be horrible. You know, there are some, there's some quite toxic comments, generally from men, people hiding behind avatars or whatever and it's um, it's, it's more than it's more than disappointing and how have you coped with that because we've chatted a lot cause, you know ab about it but how have you coped with that was there a point where you wanted to throw in the towel or did that just drive you and said no I'm just going to keep on doing this I just want to be want to be me and not mm. not told how to look um, yeah so how have you coped with that well, I've got there now, yeah. and I may be sit here now and say I'm confident in putting myself out, pregnant or not, to say this is me, this is my background, and hopefully you'll enjoy my content. Um, as a journalist who's ridden a bike for a long time, yeah. but that wasn't always the case. You know, if you look back a fair few years ago, especially when I was very young and starting out in the industry, I wasn't confident um, at receiving real negative comments. Yeah. Because no, nothing can prepare you for that because it's such a, it's just there, isn't it? There's no like transition into that. It's just like you, you make a video and, and, I, and, I've, and it just happens and you see these comments and you know, you're, you're drawn to read and it's, mm. I don't know. Where are we going next? Because the sun is slowly setting. It's still a beautifully blue sky day out there. I've got my lens choice completely wrong. Um, but what's going to be the final step? Or the final stop, should I say? I this one? want to take you now to Preston Park Velodrome. Yeah. So, Velodrome. Use the word loosely. Should we? Loosely. Should we leave it at that? Because <laughs> yeah, we should maybe. Let's. Yeah, it, it is a velodrome, but of sorts, isn't it? Of sorts. Yeah. Anyway, right. let's go. <laughs> let's go to the velodrome. So Preston Park Velodrome. Uh, my initial impressions, Rebecca, it's it's not really a velodrome, but it is. It's a hybrid, isn't it? But more <laughs> importantly, this for you was where it all started, wasn't it? You know, you're, you're still working within the industry, you still love riding, but this is where those seeds were sown, I guess. Yeah. 
Well, firstly, welcome to Preston Park Thank Velodrome. You. Thank you. The coldest place on earth. It is quite, and there's also there's footballs as well. So yeah, there's, there's, it, it's a multi-sport facility. It's fair to say, isn't it? So <laughs> when we used to come here training, yeah, that was always my fear on a Saturday morning that I'd be doing sprint training around here as fast as I could on a track bike, obviously fixed wheel, no brakes. Just going to get into the, the aero tuck, by the way, down this descent. Yeah, yeah carry on. <laughs> tell you all about that descent in a minute. I'm actually breaking. And then someone would kick a football across you and you're like, I've got no break. So it was, Flipping you know, neck. it had its own challenges. But yeah, yeah, I came down here as a really little girl because my dad ran the local track league. Okay. And so I walked into this place. Yeah. And I just fell in love. I cannot overstate that. I fell in love with this place, I fell in love with cycling, and that really was it. Yeah. It shaped absolutely everything after that. But the reason I laugh so much about this place, I'm just so fond of it. But as you can see when we go round, we're probably about to start the climb. This is the climb, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can feel it picking up, can't you? You it? descend towards that major banking yeah. section. <laughs> so let's just summarise this, this, this velodrome. Yeah. It's, it's basically a combination of a of a track and a road race circuit. It's 585 metres round, yes. which is a long way. Thank hey you. Hey guys. Um, so it's the longest track I've ever been in my life. Um, it's only got two sets of banking. So we've got one <laughs> banking taking this into the final straight and a, and a lighter banking out of it. There's a considerable descent and yes. a climb. So, so it takes, it's like track and road combined. We're on a, uh, we're on a climb here. Yep. Can feel so it if biting. you imagine, and there's always a headwind on this back yeah, straight. Yeah, I can feel it. Yeah. Straight. So when I started racing here on a track bike, I just remember talking to my dad before races about gear selection. Yeah. And saying, "Dad, my gear was wrong. I was spinning out when I was trying to go for the sprint," and he was like, "Well." The challenge is I've got to get I've got to get you up that hill. <laughs> you don't want to be overgeared for that. So you're trying to select your one gear based on two completely different parameters. Flipping it. Do you want to go up the banking just like old times? You alright? Protocol check. Protocol check, always look round. Yeah. So it's cut in and then just drop down into the straight, shall we? Just drop it in. Just drop, <laughs> drop it in. Here we go. Still moving. You still got it. In all seriousness, though, Rebecca, it's what a great space though to come as a kid. Yeah. Because there's no traffic here. It's big enough to be able to make errors on and adjust errors. But there's also with that corner and that descent and the speed you carry in there, you're going to get. A, you must have got a real thrill. So it's it's great. And the fact it's still here, and there's even now deep winter, a couple of kids riding round as well. What a cool facility. It really is. Like we joke about the multi-sport. We've got. Roller, roller, blade, booting, roller skates, yeah. rollerblading. Um, oh, here's that headwind you're talking about. <laughs> bites, isn't it? I shouldn't have gone for that sprint. No. Um, yeah, I joke about these things, but it's a really special place that's close to my heart. And without my dad and mum bringing me down here, I just wouldn't have discovered the sport in the way I did. Yeah. And it actually, all the quirks of this track. I think made me into the bike rider I became, you know, made me more confident because when you're riding a fixed round here, as you can see, you actually do have to corner a little bit. Yeah, you do. Well, Rebecca, what a lovely place to end. And when we started on the beach near where you live with the sunrise, we're finishing on the place that started it all off for you with the sun, the sunset. It's been a lovely day and thanks for sharing it with me. Oh, thank it's been you, Matt. fantastic. Yeah, what, what a way to... It's been beautiful. ...to wrap things up. Do you just want to give it a nudge for one half a lap for old time's sake? Can I, can I wait and peek at the banking? Peek at the banking. <laughs> Aerodynamics, baby. <laughs> and we're not happy. Look at that I face. Am happy. Oh, that was fun. It was fun. Thank you, Matt. No worries, it's been a Love that. Pleasure. Lovely. In a moment of reflection, lays down on her be. On our way 
to see Rebecca, Paul, and the brand new edition, Leela. I haven't seen Rebecca or Paul since we actually shot the first part, so this is the first time we're going to be with This is um Mila just hanging out. Last time I saw her, she was um inside. Inside Rebecca on a yeah. on a little uh, on a gravel ride, but there she is. Oh, that smell of babies. It's not funny with you. It's like biscuits. <laughs> <laughs>